Atlético Madrid and Real Madrid drew 1-1 in the Madrid derby in a result that benefits Barcelona quite a lot. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? ¿Cómo están? Bogalis here and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, of course, we had the Madrid Derby, a very important game for La Liga for all three main sides involved in the title race for Barcelona, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. So, of course, we have to talk about this result because it will 100% impact how the title race will go. And I want to, first of all, take a look at the lineup that both teams put out because it was very strong for both of them. It really, really was a, a great match if you managed to solve it. Jano Black, uh, Reynildo, Jose Maria Jimenez, Robin Lenormand, Nahuel Molina, Julian Alvarez, Conor Gallagher, Marcos Llorente, Rodrigo De Paul, Alexander Sorloth, Antoine Griezmann for Atletico Madrid. And on the right-hand side for Real Madrid, we had... Thibaut Courtois, Daniel Carvajal, Antonio Rudiger, Eder Militao, Ferland Mendy, Jude Bellingham, Uriel Chiuameni, Luka Modric, Federico Elverde, Vinicius Jr., and Rodrigo. Of course, Kylian Mbappé did not play in this game, so it was going to be a very big of a point of interest, let's say, for the neutral spectators to see whether Real Madrid were actually going to improve, were going to be better without Kylian Mbappé, because that is something that a lot of people discussed, right? in the preview to this game that we all know Mbappe and Vinicius both like the same position and even to an extent Rodrigo as well so they're sort of stepping over each other's foots and it doesn't really work out to be the best smoothest play for Real Madrid and Carlo Ancelotti's side so I was very interested to see what happened there with the formation I think Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid played a game very similar to last season last season as we know Real Madrid uh, didn't manage to win or, well, lost both Madrid derbies or the most important ones per se, the one at the Wanda Metropolitano and the one in La Copa del Rey. So Atletico Madrid definitely has uh, Real Madrid's number a bit, you know, you could say that, especially coming into this season. And with the new incorporations that Atletico Madrid uh, bought during the transfer window in Sorlo. Julian Alvarez and Conor Gallagher, that all of them played in this game, and, and also Robin Lenormand, uh, I was expecting a very all-stars, you know, proper game, you know, like a proper clash between the two sides, and that's exactly what we got. So after recording the podcast that we do every Sunday about Barcelona with my friends Pablo and John, we then jumped over to watch the game, each on their own side, and we kept talking on the group chat, and we all said just... Dude, Atletico Madrid, the intensity they're putting out, it's superb. It really is good. They really do turn up, Simeone's side, when it comes to facing Madrid. I thought the very first half was quite showing, particularly of what Atletico Madrid wanted to do. They're now a team, I think, that Simeone has sort of evolved quite a bit when it comes to the attacking sense of it. He played very bravely with this line of four. Normally, he could have gone with a line of four, a uh, line of five, sorry. But this line of four of course, showed up a little bit more that he wanted to go out, win this game, take this chance, take the game by the scruff of the neck. And particularly by playing Julian Alvarez, Sorloff, and Antoine Griezmann, I was not expecting all three to play this game, but they did. I would have expected an extra midfielder maybe in Coque, like, I mean, their club captain to play in this game, but from the, from the get-go, he did play, but later on in the second half. So Simeone really, really put out there to Real Madrid that, okay, we're going to win the ball very high up. We're going to try to push you and get you cornered back down. And we will eventually contain you when it comes to those 1v1 one we, one we one duels on the counter. Like, we think that we can take you on when you counter, since there's no threat of Mbappe, which would have been a perfect player for things like this. And to probably not that many people surprised, they handled it very nicely. They handled Real Madrid very nicely during that first half, and I, and I can say that for the entirety of the game. The goal for Real Madrid came in the second half from Eder Militao after a foul that, in my opinion, it really wasn't a foul. We all know Real Madrid, how they, how they are, <laughs> how the referees particularly have that sort of blind eye pointed to, to them. I'm going to try to see if I can find the the foul that really shouldn't have been given because in reality, uh, that's a, a very big miss. I thought that it, it wasn't a foul from Roy Lenormand on Minisys Jr. Here it is. Here it is. Quickly on Twitter, you can see it. You can see how Ramari... There, you see, he, he barely clips it. He barely clips Minisys Jr., but the referee still gave it a foul. Like, for me, it really isn't a foul. Like, I'm agree with Koke there. Like, 
completely like Vinicius where you're doing piscinazo. He just, he just dived onto it. So yeah, for me, that wasn't a foul. And ultimately, well, Modric picked the right side. He gave it to Vinicius Jr. Vinicius one on one, and that's how they score. So fair play to them. Madrid always has that. Real Madrid has the ability, as we all know, to score out of absolutely any situation. Like no matter what happens, it's always a threat when they're close near a goal. You simply know that they're going to be able to score. Um, but I think that Ancelotti sort of read the substitutions wrong once they were 1-0 up. I think that for Atletico Madrid, it's really hard to come back into a game. Normally, they don't tend to come back into games as much as they used to before. I think that for Atletico Madrid now, the much the let's say the, the thing that would have benefited them the most is if it's they went um one year up first themselves and then they could hold on to the lead because that I think that's the best thing that they're gonna do, which is hold on to a lead and then counter. That's literally Simeone's style in a nutshell. Like I said, I think he has evolved a little bit from that and that sort of negatively affects the team at this current stage. But they did. I mean, eventually, congratulations to them. They got back. Real Madrid didn't put the best substitutes in. And they got back into the game. Angel Correa is, like, absolutely the best super sub in the history of La Liga. I have absolutely no problem in saying that. He has scored crucial goals. He scored this season already in extra time against Bilbao to win a point there or, or actually win the game, if I'm not wrong. And then he did, again, this in the Madrid derby. So good on him. He's just a, a tremendous player for Simeone. Has been almost here for a very big time, long time, almost a decade now at Atletico Madrid. So Angel Correa, very underrated player, in my opinion. Surprised that he's still happy with the role that he fulfills in this club. I mean, he has the number 10. He's sort of like the golden child or, or so loved by the by the fan base, even though despite he's not that young anymore. So yeah, Angel Correa has found a good place in, in the world there in, in Atletico Madrid. Another player that we have to highlight for Atletico Madrid overall in this game uh, is Conor Gallagher. I think that Conor Gallagher is such an Atletico Madrid player. Like, I'm very surprised the way that Chelsea sold him. They, of course, wanted to get uh, somebody else through the door. They wanted to find a way to get Samu into Chelsea, but ultimately they got Jao Felix instead, and Atletico Madrid got a win-win with that deal. They got here in Conor Gallagher a player that is absolutely a machine, a pit bull of the, of the midfield. He's an, he is the definition of the engine room. He's such a good box-to-box -box midfielder that will... 100% be close to his man, keep a tight mark, and that's exactly what he did on Jude Bellingham. I think that Jude Bellingham, without a shadow of a doubt, it's Real Madrid's most important player this season, and will be, or, or should be. Why do I say this? Because with the creation, or with the lack of, per se, of a proper creative fulcrum in attack, I mean, you just have Vinicius and Mbappe, but like I said, they play for the same position. You need somebody else that can control that tempo of the game you won't have that extra player there in the midfield in the, in the attacking line that can do that so i think bellingham is right now the link between the attack and the midfield for real madrid and in this game conor garager and particularly simeone knew that so he put the englishman on the other englishman and he was superb so very good i think conor garager had a very good game i think that another thing that we have to mention for this game is particularly how real madrid did they, a question that we have to pose is, is Real Madrid play, be, playing better without Mbappe? Did they manage to do that? I think the answer is no. I think actually, of course, you cannot say that Mbappe is, if not the best player in the world right now. You could definitely say that. So it's never for me going to be a positive that you're not having a player of his quality in your team. Definitely that ilk of player will always be beneficial. The thing is that in a team like Atletico Madrid, you saw that actually a player like Mbappe is particularly what they needed. They needed someone who could just make that run into the space and be a complete headache for the entire back line. There's not a single player in that back four who is particularly fast and has that one-on-one -on -one ability for me to be maybe Reinildo and Robin Lenormand. But if Mbappe could tackle, for instance, could could aim at just exploiting exploiting the space behind Abel Molina and tackle uh, and, and Real Madrid could tackle Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid in that way, I think it would have been very beneficial for them. But Mbappe wasn't here, right? He's injured for two more weeks, so let's see how it goes. And like I said, for now, we should just ask the question, how is this beneficial for Barcelona? Well, if we check the league table, which I'm going to give myself liberty of doing right now, Barcelona right now sit at the top with 21 points. Real Madrid come in second with 18. And Atletico Madrid coming next with 16 points. 
Barcelona so far have been uh, beaten. Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid because of the draw, they continue their unbeaten run, which is definitely good for them. Like, let's be honest, we need competition to, of course, maintain the league at a very good pace. But it's good for for Barcelona. I think that eventually a loss that wasn't predicted or wasn't sort of marked up in the calendar or wasn't, like I said, yeah, predicted, it's good that eventually your other two rivals sort of drop points in that one as well. It makes Barcelona potentially dream three points, now only losing like one. You know, it, it diminishes that. It sort of cancels it out. So it's very good on that. Um, and quick shout out to here. I just see Lo, Giovanni Lo Celso, five goals for Real Betis this season already. That's insane. That's actually very surprising for Lo Celso coming back to Betis there. Um, but anyhow, so Barcelona, definitely this is a good result for them. Great result for Barcelona. The draw for Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. The guys on the pod said that they prefer that Atletico Madrid actually beat Real Madrid because they think that at the end of the day, even though Atletico Madrid may be closer, having Real Madrid more points as a margin uh, is better. I do agree. Uh, right now, I wouldn't focus too much on it, on my opinion. I think that Barcelona just need to stay calm and keep a sort of gap until El Clásico. Then in El Clásico, anything can happen. If Barcelona can somehow maintain this three-point lead to El Clásico, I would be very happy. And also, I would like it if that margin became a little bit bigger, maybe just one or two points more. But let's continue and see how Barcelona does it. Let's remember as well that Barcelona are playing a lot of their games in uh, the new Spotify Camp Nou at the end of the year. That's why we're seeing plenty of away games first for Barcelona. So, so far, they just played against Osasuna away from home. The next game is against Deportivo Alaves away from home. So Barcelona are going to be playing in contrast to any any all of the other teams in La Liga, way more home games by the end of the season. So that could be very, very advantageous for Hansi Flick and their team. I think that if they manage to create some momentum by that stage and all of the players are back in it, then it could be a good thing for Los Cules and a very unfortunate thing for the rest of the Spanish league. So let's see how it goes. That's going to be my opinion about this game between Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. It was a very fun game. It was exciting. And also, yeah, before I go, let's talk about that. What do I think? What's my opinion on definitely the, you know, the, the entire thing, the entire dispute, the game getting suspended in the midtime? I think overall, I agree with uh, the Simeone's statements. He did say, uh, I'm going to try to look it up for you guys as well, because his words were on point. I do think that Courtois needs to have some sort of, not suspension, not... Uh, he just need to be called up. Like that thing is basically uh, both parties are involved. Not only the fans, but the player as well. I mean, you are the protagonist. You are the guys, the provocation of the public. You are the guys who need to take responsibility of what is being done. And ultimately, um, it's a responsibility as well, as well because you have such a good privilege to play in these situations. There's absolutely no need of a player like Courtois provoking any of the players. So I think that's a, a two-way street, right? Of course, that's negative. It's ultimately negative that people threw stuff at the players. That's unacceptable. That should never happen. And and that's one thing. And another thing is, hey, you shouldn't be looking for reactions or you shouldn't be looking at players to, to do that, right? You shouldn't be looking to have fans react in that way. That it's, it's just wrong. So here is a statement from... Uh, Diego Simeone, Thibaut Courtois, of course, the throwing of the objects isn't justified, but that neither it is what starts it. Because otherwise, we are always the victims. People don't get angry on their own. It's for a reason, and we don't contribute to that. We need to calm down. And I agree with that statement 100%. I do think it's very important to remember that you have a place and you have a responsibility in all that you do in the sport with such a privileged position. So... Yeah, I think Courtois needed to do better and 100% the Atletico Madrid fans need to do better as well. How did the referee handle it? I think it's okay. I mean, at the end of the day, um, it was justified. I like the minutes being added on at the end, I guess. And that ultimately led to Atletico Madrid's um, equalizer. So, fair game, you know. GG, good game, well played. See you in the next one. So, that's going to be it for me as well. Uh, I guess, sorry for the redundancy, but... Thanks for watching, and yes, I'll see you in the next one as well. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.